So the church is um, undoubtedly hard-hearted towards the poor. So this is something that I've seen over the past 30 years and in almost every church I've been in. And if I haven't seen it in a church that I've been in, it's because there haven't been any poor people there, excluded people, disadvantaged people, you know, broken, needy people. There haven't been any people there for them to be hard-hearted towards. So why is the church... Why is the church hard-hearted to the poor? So if you're going to put people in leadership, like 99% of church leaders are, they're highly educated. Most of them have degrees or even if they haven't, like they're, they've got a businessman or, and, and, and even if they're not, I mean, even if you get someone occasionally, because you do get like church leaders occasionally that come from a background of, like poverty or they're poor or they're, they don't you know they've been out of work or they've had a tough time you do get church leaders like that give the church one year and they will knock these people into shape so they become another clone of the majority because human nature is to want to fit in isn't it so if you no matter what you do because no matter even if you put in leaders who are you know you know from poor backgrounds, you know, from social housing or, you know, they've had difficulties or they've been homeless or they've had, you know, all the issues that I've mentioned before. If you put someone in like that, it doesn't take long before they just become like everyone else because that's what that's what happened. That's what I did. And I, I didn't realise exactly what was happening. I just knew that I didn't dress prop- properly. I didn't speak properly. I wasn't highly educated. I was poor, I didn't have any money, you know, I, I, I knew, it's it's more than that, it's, it's more than that, it's really hard to actually p- bring this down and pinpoint exactly what's going on, but I know for me, because I didn't fit in and the majority were different and acted in a certain way and spoke in a certain way, dressed in a certain way, everything they did, socialised, you know, they were all very, all, all very similar. I changed. So over those 10, first 10, 15 years, I started to wear different clothes. I learned a different way of speaking. I learned to tone myself down, to not be so excited and on fire for Christ. I learned to tone that down. I learned not to share my testimony with people. I learned not to share what God was doing in my life with people. Because when I had, all I got was a smile, a nice little smile and that's interesting you know nobody seemed on fire for Christ and so if you're going to join a church even if you're on fire for Christ and you you know you're born again how long will it take before you start to buy in to the culture and in the UK I don't know about anywhere else but in the UK it's a very middle class culture church is a very middle class culture so you over the years if you stay you're either going to have to change or you're not going to fit in and you're going to leave. So most everybody I know that I have taken to church in that from that category has left. I'm trying to think if there's even one person and I must have taken, I don't know, a lot of people in those 15 years, 100, maybe more. I don't know. All these people in great need and searching for Christ. Some of them were believers, some of them on the edge of coming to faith you know needing support needing help and even if they weren't christians the bible says we should help people like this the world inwardly i wanted to still reach out to people but nobody reached out to people really in churches they just they just don't that's never a priority in any of the churches i've been to the priority is always you know what god can do for us is people christians in my experience are very inward looking they don't look outside and and it all starts with the leadership. If you're going to put people in church leadership who are all from the same ilk, 99, 98% of them are all from the same ilk, that is going to be how the church operates, isn't it? That is going to be the type of people you're going to bring in. Because like attracts like, and birds of a feather do stick together. That shouldn't be the way, should it? Because when we become Christians, you know, it shouldn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter that I'm like, middle-aged and I should be able to get on just as easy with an 18 year old I should be because we are 
filled with the spirit you know we're, we're brothers and sisters in christ of any age and any background and i have met christians like that who are so filled with the spirit they don't look on outward appearance or they don't look on your age or your background you know you just click with them because you share that in common you have the holy spirit and you see in their eyes that they're your brother or sister in christ but this is not the way churches run this is not the way it works and the problem is because you have people like this running churches you're going to attract people like that because that's how life works that's how people are generally and so you're going to be alienating the poor right from the start from the moment you plant a church you're going to be alienating the poor because even if you do bring people in like that even if you do invite them even if they come in they're not going to be included and accepted people try i've seen over the years i've seen uh, middle class christians who have got no idea on how to um, cope with someone who's broken and in need or poor or disadvantaged or you know got had issues in their past whether it's drugs alcohol mental health debt you know i've seen christians middle class christians try so they'll reach out to them and they'll go and visit them once a week and i actually remember going and visiting someone um and um this guy would visit this person this poor person who lived who had like issues um once a week and he would sit with this poor person for one hour and he took me once to visit because he thought i would get on with this person because obviously i was from a similar background and he took me and he sat there and i remember i knew that he'd gone for an hour but the person he'd gone to visit didn't know that and i i saw him check his watch after an hour and make his excuses to leave and that was it he'd done his bit I don't think Jesus was like that. Jesus was a friend of sinners. He was a friend. When you're a friend of someone, you actually value them. You're not just there to do your bit, to ease your conscience because the church leader, because someone in church leadership has told you this is what you need to do because, you know, the Bible says you should do this. You're not, when you're a friend of someone, you're there because you want to be there. You're there because the Holy Spirit has taken you there. Because the Holy Spirit has revealed to you how important these people are to Jesus, how important the lost and the broken and the needy are to Jesus. There's a massive chasm and there shouldn't be a chasm between you because you're rich or poor. If you have the Holy Spirit, there shouldn't be a divide based on class. There shouldn't be a divide based on money, based on your background. You know, we need to be able to have people in this church who are not from the same background as everyone else and we need to be able to include them and accept them and help them grow because there's a whole section of society that are missing from churches and they don't go and the reason they don't go is for that very reason but the church is completely blind to this and it's crazy because if you look at jesus look at his life what was he he was poor he was rejected he was outcast you know his friends turned against him maybe his family might have even turned against him the religious people of the day didn't like him look at jesus look at paul uh look look at look at the early church look at john the baptist <laughs> i mean look at the look at the people in the bible look at the way they were and who they were and what their backgrounds were like so the fact that the poor and the working classes don't go to church is a st systemic issue isn't it because the church is set up from the start to alienate the poor and the working classes from its buildings yeah so sadly the church is just set up from from the start as soon as you put a middle class leader in and his friends or his family and his social network who come with him and as soon as you start that i mean i've seen this this done on like social housing estates where the poor people live you, they put someone puts a church plant in and um nobody goes nobody goes from that is from the estate do, do they not realize why it seems like they don't it's, it's just crazy we need to have working class and poor people leading our churches bible colleges need to change they need to change the way they make a decision about whether they'll let someone in because when i went to bible college as i've said i was the only person from a poor background i was the only i was um a single parent i'd been homeless i'd been out of work I, you know, I was the only person from that background in the whole of the college at the time, as far as I was aware. As long as middle class culture permeates the church, working class poor people are never going to go. They're just not going to go. There needs to be a huge change, a huge shift on how we do church and how we appoint leaders. It's funny because I actually remember my uh, daughter moved to Peckham when she was, I can't remember, about 18 or something, and I 
went down to stay with her and I was really excited to go to a church in the middle of Peckham because it was like probably one of the poorest areas in London. I was so excited. So Sunday morning, I, I, I went with her to this, um, it was Church of England church in Peckham and I walked in and I was horrified. There was probably only 20 people, 25 people there. And straight away, you could have just transplanted the congregation from Oxford, where I live, and put it there. And it was exactly the same. There was not one poor person there. They were exactly the same people. In fact, exactly the same types of people. In fact, I actually knew a couple of people who I'd known in Oxford. You know, And this is what happens. The middle classes, they have like such a tight grip on the church um that and they're not going to let anyone else in and they you know people it doesn't matter that they're middle class of course it doesn't matter you know pe people are middle class can find jesus but what matters is that they have the power and they have the decision making power and they're the ones that are alienating the poor and the working classes from the churches because they do it their way and they won't listen i've tried over the years so many times 30 years i've tried to say look let's do this can we do this can we do that and every time i've been met with no 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 I can't do it because I have to do it their way. I can't do it my way. I would know, wouldn't I, how to reach people from that background because I'm from that background. I live with these people. I work with these people. I know these people. I would know, but no one would ever give me a chance. And I'm not like here saying, oh, it's not fair. No, no, no. no I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm past all that. What I'm saying is if that we want a revival in this country, who, where is going, the masses need to come into the church. What are the masses? The masses are working class. All the middle class people are already, if they want to be there, they're there, aren't they? If, if you want to have a revival, it's going to come when the working classes come in, into the church or at least find Christ. And they're, they're not going to find it the way the church is set up at the moment. They're not going to find it because it's just far too alien to them. And not only that, so many people that I've known who are poor and working class, homeless or destitute, who've gone to church have, have been really damaged by the experience, seriously damaged by the experience. Something's got to change. You know, this is this just got to change. I truly believe that God wants to overhaul the church. And maybe he just wants church just to close down and we need to start again. That'd be good. Anyway, uh, I think this is going to be the end of um, the second video. Uh, thanks for listening.